It was the most terrifying experience for me in the world. But it was an introduction to, into kind of the mad world of being on telly in New Zealand, I think. And um, nothing else like it had been around. And it was the first time, you know, it's a dreadful word, but it was the first time there were sort of stars or celebrity in the country. So we were arrogant, horrible creatures and we'd travel in packs and go to these fantastic parties and think we were terribly flash and important. And we'd borrow clothes from the wardrobe because they had really good clothes. So it was, um, it was a great jumping into that whole world. I remember even when I was doing the show, we would all get it together at someone's house on Wednesday night, I think it was on, and we'd have, you know, champagne and watch the show and go, woohoo! At other people's bits. If your bit was, well, for me anyway, when my bits were on, it would be fetal position on the sofa. Guy Warner was an annoying social worker. Everyone else got to be doctors, and I had to be a social worker. But it, that first two years, I think, was the beginning of the Shorten Street mentalness. And, um, and within those years, it was like everyone in the country watched it and um, you became a Shortland Street actor. But when you work on the show, it's, it's so all-consuming. You're there every day, you start very early, you finish very late. We all were friends before the show anyway, so we tended to hang out together. Um, and it does become a little bubble, I think. You, you end up losing track of a few things. You're doing 20, 30 scenes a day sometimes, and every scene you just, you get very good at going, what's important about the scene? What do I need to get? What story are we telling? Technically, you get very good at working out that stuff, so it gets rid of a lot of the um, wishy-washy indecision of an actor, and um, it also kicks your ego out the door when it comes to work a lot, I think. Um, you just have to get on, you have to do it. I worked a lot with Teresa Healy and we would get, about three o'clock, we would always get, you know, sugar depleted and mental and basically do terrible things around the studio. And they put up with us. The great thing when you're an actor, you can be terribly misbehaved, you know, childish and stupid. And people sort of just go, oh, okay, and let you get away with it. Hercules was the first one. And when the scripts came out for that, everyone's reading through, just going, this is dreadful, we'd never be in this. It's awful, that'll never last. And um, sure enough, it lasted 10 years and spun off Zenit. For actors, it was, it was like panto season. You, every now and again, you'd, you'd get a role, you'd put a different wig on or a different moustache and um, go and play for a couple of weeks, get paid fantastically well at the time and um, have a really good time. And they're still, they're still kind of mental fun to watch. She and I were shooting a, um, a horse fight scene where it's a big battle at the end and we're on horses going Arr. And a couple of the American execs had come out with their kids and they had been walking around the, the set going, oh, you know, hey, how are you? Oh, it's great. Kids were just blown away because they loved Xena and thought it was really cool. And we were at the end of the day and there wasn't much time. So we're trying to do the horse thing and the horses are a bit fractious. So Lucy just goes, right, I've got an idea and we put these sandbags down in the middle of the ground, got some bungee cords which we tied to the sandbags, then tied the bridles, are they bridles? Those things, to the bungee cords, and our swords, cameras sort of here, and she and I are sort of trotting, doing horse trotting around these bungee cords, having a fight. Really stupid, looks great on screen. And I remember seeing these two kids, American kids, who had just thought we were so cool all day. And then the look on their faces is like, you dicks, you sad losers. It was a, a sort of gentle, character-driven show about people just out of Auckland or anywhere, it wasn't specifically Auckland, um, relationships, dramas, but it was smart. The characters were, were beautifully, subtly written. Um, I think I described it way at the beginning as, um, it's about these people and stuff happens to them, which it kind of was. We had fantastic catering on um, Mercy P. And a couple of years ago, I was looking at all the apps for, um, to put a showreel together. So you sort of fast forward three years of your life, you see yourself in fast motion. And it would start at the end of summer 
So the first couple of apps, everyone's tanned and looking healthy and great. And as you're fast forwarding through, you realize that over winter and over great catering, everyone just goes And then about a month and a half before the end of the series, summer's coming, people have seen themselves on screen and gone, God, I've got fat. And so everyone goes mentally kind of healthy. So over your six months, you start with slim and then just everyone goes And then shrinks again, back for the next series. So that was, that's my, my memory of myself and Mercy Pete. It was one of those very complicated shots that started from a buzzer and travelled down, came under the radio booth and discovered us in full flagrante. So we had to be kind of on top of each other, ready to go through this thing. And it seemed like hours just pressed into each other. And it was, it was so awful because we're just there going, I'm, you know, I'm lying on top of my sister and <laughs> he's going, my brother is trying to hump me. And um, yeah, we... We giggled through nervousness a lot. It's hot. When you see the scene, it's really hot. But, but yeah, she's a brilliant, genius professional, Robbie, but crap at shagging. I um, played the fat elf, um, Hal Deer. That also had good catering. Um, uh, uh, three amazing films that I've, you know, they're, they're just beautiful. And we'd never done anything of that size in this country I don't think we have since and again a really group a good group of people that they'd assembled for the cast I think there was very much a sense of Peter and Fran at the beginning going we're going to spend three years with these people we have to make sure they're they're good human beings you know otherwise it would be a nightmare so it, yeah it was it was it was a sense of of fun and joy and um and I think the only way people got through that length of the shoot and that arduous a shoot was kind of clinging together and um, being nice to each other. I absolutely adored doing it. it I don't th know how well it translated into a final piece. Um, it was also on quite late at night, so I don't think a lot of people watched it. Um, yeah, it was it was it was a strange one. It's I'm very fond of the experience of it, um, but I don't know how successful we were in creating the the sort of final product of a show, which which fascinates me because it's there are so many things that go into getting it right, and and I know on that one, you know, every single person um, worked so hard to get it right, and it was a a crew that adored it and we, we, you know, people put in huge hours that they didn't necessarily get paid for. Um, you know, people were paid, but extra work. And yet something doesn't quite happen. So I don't know. It's about a world where everyone was wanting power, basically. If you didn't have power, you were nothing. And People achieved it through sex and through violence and um, through manipulation and destroying other people in the most terrible way. And life was cheap in them days. You know, people, people had slaves. People could, they were chattels. They could do with what they want. Um, so you've got this world which is incredibly violent, where sex is a, is a very powerful tool. And, um, and the show, which is shot so beautifully, it's all green screen. Um, surrounds is 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 beautiful. It's like every shot is like a painting. Within it, you've got these characters. This is uh, Lucy Lawless and John Hanna's um, characters, and they are they're kind of like car salesmen who who want to get ahead. So they've they've got a bit of power, and they've got a whole lot of people underneath them who rely on them and fear them, but they don't. They want to be posh, and so it's quite a mundane suburban power struggle set in this mental world. I, I think it's, from what I've seen, it's, I think it's going to be a truly amazing show. It's, um, it's one I want to sit down over a weekend and just watch and watch and watch.